Okay, so now we're going to look at chapter 24. And so um, chapter 24 was all about kind of speciation. And so what is that? So the, the emergence of new species. So how do we go from one species um, to two species? And so, <clears throat> so we have, we're going to review what we call the biological species concept. And so, so look at that. What does that mean? What does it mean to be a species? Um, and so on. So basically, what separates different species is that they are reproductively isolated. So I'm going to put here reproductive isolation. And so, and so if uh, species, if organisms become isolated and cannot. Um, mate, they can become different species. And what preserves that um, are two categories of isolation. It's called the prezygotic barriers. So what does that mean? Habitat isolation. Um, behavioral. Um, temporal, so this is behaviors, they don't looking for certain um, behaviors, habitat, they're isolated um, by their habitat. Um, uh, temporal is timing, so like flowers flowering at different times of the day or mating at different seasons. Um, there's mechanical isolation, and lastly, gametic isolation. And so these, you want to review and look at these. Um, they're all prezygotic barriers, which means they happen before the zygote. So then we have the category of postzygotic barriers. So this is reduced hybrid <clears throat> viability. So the hybrid, when um, two species mate, the hybrid um, uh, has some things wrong with it, so it has some health issues and so on. It's still able to live, um, uh, maybe, but maybe dies early on in life, um, it, or it's born, I should say. It's post the zygote, so it's able, the zygote is able to be formed. Um, so look at that and look at reduced hybrid fertility. And lastly, hybrid breakdown. So review those, and those are all post-zygotic behaviors, all right? And so, <clears throat> so um, uh, when speciation does happen, these barriers, um, uh, you know, we cross these barriers. And so um, there's two kinds of speciation. Um, there's allopatric speciation. Um, the members of the species become geographically separated. I guess I don't need to write all this. And evolve differently. So um, adaptive radiation would be that. Um, sympatric speciation the organisms are not geographically separated so so that's the main difference there so review that look at the examples of those so you know the difference um, between those alright and so um uh, if we look at that, so if they're not geographically separated. So this um, uh, sympatric speciation can occur um, in plants. Uh, so organisms like within this, like plants can do that. Um, we talked about um, the different types of polyploidy. Um, I went through in our notes an example of auto and allo polyploidy. All right. Um, so they're not geographically separated. And then we looked at gradualism, 
versus punctuated equilibrium. Punctuated equilibrium. And so that's the timing and how um, uh, evolution um, occurred. All right, and so review those as well. So look in your notes and review those. So that's just a basic overview of Chapter 24, the main concepts. I'm not going over every little specific thing, but um, just gives you the general overview of it. All right, so then we're going to look at Chapter 25. So Chapter 25, I'll do a new sheet here. <clears throat> It's all about phylogeny, um, and so classifying organisms and making trees to show evolutionary relationships, um, and so on. <clears throat> so the first thing that we talked about here is um, basically um, taxonomy, and so <clears throat> so I'm looking at this how we organize living things. So remember we have the naming system, that binomial naming where we go um, genus, species. All right, so that's how we, so we're homo sapien. Uh, and so the first part is the genus and the second part is the, the species. Um, then we talked about um, organization, so um, the categories. So you should know the order of those categories. So domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. All right, and so, so you should know that. Um, each one of these groups are called a taxon. So each one of these are called taxons. And so remember, um, the domain eukarya is one of the domains, and that's subdivided into different kingdoms, and then each kingdom is subdivided into different phylums, and each phylum then has different classes, and so on and so forth, until eventually you get to individual species. And so, um, so that's the organization. All right, so then we look at relatedness of organisms and put them into a phylogenetic tree. So we need to know the basic overview of what a phylogenetic tree shows. Um, and so this is kind of like, uh, you know, interpreting trees, um, the, the kind of the activity we just went over in class. Um, the Pogel phylogenetic tree and, and being able to interpret and look at what these different things mean um, and so on and so forth. So, so you need to be able to understand those. And so I think with tr the trees, I think that going over this activity um, and, and so on kind of served as a nice little review of how to interpret um, trees and, and interpret data and it even used some other data like DNA um, to be able to make and use that information like here to um, put them on a, a tree and so um, so so um, you know review that and and look at the the phylogenetic tree and, and remember that they are hypotheses um, about the evolutionary relationships um, and so as because they're hypotheses uh, then we though they can be stand uh, could be stood to change based upon new information so new molecular information like DNA sequences um, and so on and so forth can cause our tree to change all right and so <clears throat> then we looked at cladistics all right um, and so and so we talked about how to draw um, a tree like this and how that relates to a cladogram that can be drawn like this all right and so looking at this and and so on so <clears throat> so um, in this particular case here um, they show the same information um, uh, a tree in the, the a cladogram, um, but uh, you want to review that. We, we um, looked at um, with cladistics um, 
that homework, we went over it on the Friday before spring break. It says Baby Campbell, Chapter 15 at the top. Um, it was about the um, plants and the groups of plants, plant groups. And so it had for the mosses, ferns, um, gymnosperms, and or cones and flowering plants, um, and then it had green algae on, on it. So what I'd like you to do is to kind of review that, um, and that will give you a good idea as far as a, a cladogram um, and what that does. Within a cladogram, there are two things that you need to be familiar with, shared ancestral character, Another way to say that is primitive. And then the second one is a shared derived character. Um, and so shared ancestral has the, um, is included in the ancestors and then derived is particular to a particular group. Um, and so so that's what that means. For those people who weren't here on Friday, this is the the this is the thing that I was talking about that was homework and that was due. And so this is the cladogram here. So a shared um, uh, ancestral characteristic of all plants. The plants are the mosses, ferns, and conifers. So this would be in the ancestor as well. So that would be a shared primitive or ancestral. These guys would be derived um, uh, characteristics. And so um, if you weren't here, I'm just going to show you the answers here. You can pause this video or take a shot of it um, so that you have the answers. Um, um, you know, to be able to um, check yourself. All right, so, so there's the answers. There's the answers. All right, so that's what you have there. And then also on the back side, these are the answers here. So you can pause that. And here's the answers here. All right, so you can pause that. All right, so, so everybody, even if you weren't here, should have those answers. So just review that and go over that and make sure you understand um, understand that. And so that's cladistics um, is what we're looking at here. And so we talked also um, in the notes about how to make one of these um, these things, um, uh, a tree or a cladogram. And so, so if we look here, like this part of the notes. So a one, remember zero represents that they don't have the trait and one means that they do. And so when you look at this, then um, you can make a, um, uh, a diagram um, based upon, um, uh, you know, what traits the organisms have. So um, in terms of this, the vertebral column, the lancelet does not have it, but everything else does. So here's your root of your tree and so the lancelet that's your out group um, and so everybody else is so we're talking we're comparing different vertebrate um, organisms so then the hinge jaw the lamprey doesn't those two don't have it but the rest of them do so so therefore we put here so here's the lamprey and everything else has a hinge jaw so that's why they put the characteristic vert vertebral column here um, because the lancelet doesn't have it but that means that anything beyond this has it um, and also actually has the um, characteristic of vertebral column and so then so the lamprey has it um, the vertebral column but doesn't have hinged jaws and so we put here hinged jaws and so here's your lamprey doesn't have it everything else does have it so another way to draw this I, I did on the board is a cladogram here where the lancelet would be the out group down here and so then, then we'd have the lamp, <coughs> the lamp, <coughs> excuse me, the lamprey. So <clears throat> the lamprey would go next, and then the bass, and then the frog, and then the turtle, and then the leopard. 
And then you could put the, the characteristics here. So the lancelet from here to here, um, this is the vertebral column. So everything, meaning that this means that the lance column, the lancelet doesn't have it, and everything on this cladogram um, from this point on has it. So the lamprey bass fish, or, um, and so on, so the frog or, or whatever. And then... Next, we'd add the hinge jaw. I'm just going to put HJ, then the four walking legs, then the amnion, and then the hair. And so the only or so these the only one that has hair is the leopard. And so these guys here would be shared derived characteristics, and this would be the ancestral or primitive characteristic. All right, that's in the out group. And so the lancelet is the out group and the in-group. Okay, and so, and so that's a cladogram and how it relates to a phylogenetic tree. So both of these, you can interpret and get the same information from this, all right? And so then, um, so then we looked at, um, you know, the trees and looking at the different branch links and what they can mean. Sometimes it means time, sometimes it doesn't, um, and so on, but, uh, uh, that's pretty much this chapter is all about interpreting these trees and looking at and these cladograms and being able to uh, figure out, um, you know, the relationships of organisms. Um, so like I said, going over that phylogenetic tree handout um, is um, helpful. And that's basically 25. All right, so so this is chap so we just looked at chapter twenty four and twenty five, so that gives you the big picture, kind of how everything goes together. I'm not going to do chapter twenty six because we just did that, um, so it's fresh, should be fresh in your brain. You just have to look at the geologic record and the order of events and so on, and what occurs when, um, and so on. So we have the two review videos. So study hard, and I'll see you later.